G'day guys, here's five tips to help you improve the user experience and design of your next bubble IO build. Now, number one will be style. So making sure we delete those default styles or create a template that you can reuse and duplicate for future builds and putting in this effort from the start makes your building process a lot smoother. Um, and it saves a lot of headaches down the track when you get confused about what colors, what fonts, uh, what size, everything like that just starts to get a little bit messy if you don't do it from the start. So number one is I'll show you how you can uh, create those default uh, styles from the start. Now number two is gonna be a color palette. So making sure that you choose and stick to a consistent color palette for your buttons. You might have one or two primary colors that you're gonna use uh, for active text. You might have your headers, um, such as uh, you might have a black or something like that, and your subheader using um, a nice soft gray. Um, so making sure that you choose those primary colors from the start, uh, put them into your template and reuse them in your builds will make your building process a lot easier. Now number three is gonna be response to making sure that when you build your project that you've got those skills down pat to be able to make sure that as you're building and building out the functionality that your design and responsiveness look great on the desktop all the way down to the smaller phone sizes. Now number four to making sure that your user experience is spot on is navigation. So it's important that the user, when they first land on your platform, that they're not trying to search to see where to go. So uh, I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways to make sure that your menus, your drop down menus, uh, your side, uh, left menu, all the way down to the phone using a slide out menu, making sure that they are all set up perfectly for your next build. And number five is utilizing reusable elements. So we design once and reuse those uh, again and again throughout your build. So let's dive on into your Bubble IO platform, create a new uh, app from scratch, and then start creating those styles that's gonna help improve the user experience on your next Bubble build. Okay, the first thing we wanna do is create a new template. So not a new app, but a new template. So if you head over to uh, my templates and create new, then we just wanna go in and delete any of the default um, pages that are pre-built by Bubble. We wanna delete any of our styles. And once we've done that, we can come down to our color palette and just pick some colors that, that you're happy with that's going to fit the uh, design uh, and the feel of your application. So uh, for example, I've picked like a, a nice sort of bright blue, uh, this sort of pink, and then we go down in tones. Um, so these are going to be for our backgrounds, our groups. Uh, we've got a nice slate gray there. Okay, so we just select um, a good variety that all match. Uh, if you need any help sort of picking out colors, um, Google some other dashboards or other software that you like. Uh, there's a great website called Colors.io which will show you the different trending colors. Okay, so that's a great starting point. Make sure that you go and update these colors, delete your styles, and then you can come in and just start building out your styles and saving them. Okay, so we might come in and we might um, uh, create our header. Let me go, this is a header. Make sure you select a font. I like to use Poppins at the moment. Add a bold. Okay, so there is our header. All we have to do is come over to styles and click create new style. Oh, and just name that header 36 pixels. We want to create a subheader. Again, if we pre-build all our styles, it makes the development process a lot easier on your next build. Okay, we want this to be a nice sort of soft gray. And just have a play around with the sizes. I think 14 looked pretty good with the 36 header. 
is a subheader. And all you, all you have to do is go and um, add each visual element, our containers, our input fields. So there's a bit of time involved in this process, but once you're done, the next time, if you can build up an arsenal of templates, next time you get a client or if you've got an idea um, for a new bit of software, you want to test something, uh, your building process will be a hell of a lot quicker. Okay, so I'm just going to add our Poppins 300 and we'll call this our primary button. And I'll just have a look and see. Yep, bold looks good. And just keep consistent with your sizes. So for example, my button sizes are 52. And we might have this as our secondary button. Okay, so as you save your styles, they're all being saved into our tabs here. Okay, so just go through and create each of your elements. We might have a picture uploader. Oh, for example, our border is dashed, roundness of three. Might be a bit too big. Okay, so you just go through and make sure that you build out all your elements. And save them. One of the really important ones is our group. So we're going to go and add a drop shadow. Our spread radius can be bumped up to eight. Now we want to pick at the dark primary color that we have and drop down our opacity to just so it's just visible. And then we can just have a look and see how this is going to look. Okay, so you can start to see how everything's sort of coming together. You've got your header, subheader, primary, secondary buttons, uh, and all your elements. So just go through and build all these out and save them into your styles. Um, the next thing that you want to make sure that you do is do style out your hovered and uh, pressed elements. So uh, w when this button is hovered, we might just reduce that purple uh, just to give the user the indication that they're going to click on this button. Okay, so we can just see that that sort of looks pretty nice. Okay, so when we go and add a element, um, it's going to uh, pre-select whatever default it is. So if you've created a element here, 
you just come into your styles, click on it and it says, make this style the default for new groups. So that means when we bring in a new group, it's already got our pre-designed group element, okay? Now, one other thing that speeds up the process as, as well is to go and unselect everything. So roundness, everything is empty. And I just create this style called empty styling. Okay, and that's great because we might bring in a group and we go, yeah, we don't really want that. We just want it to be a, um, an empty styling. So it's a very quick way uh, to just remove any of the um, design features that you've created for that element. Okay, so let's have a look at responsiveness and how design, uh, designing your element styles uh, can affect and help with your responsiveness as you build out your um, software. So if we have an element here, um, it's basically just added and we've centered it and our main page is set at 920 and we've got no uh, restraints or anything on this element. Okay, so let's have a look and see how that looks. So we've got that element, it's centered, and we can see as we go to our smaller screen size, it's all nice and centered. But we do have a lot of space on the side here. When looking and designing at mobile, we don't want to have too much of these because you might have your group here and then your buttons and then you have more space and you start to get really cramped um, when designing for mobile. So. A great way is to jump over to our responsive tab on the left here and we want to say when the screen size gets below there so let's go 570 we click on our element and we want to say collapse margins when container width is less than 920 so it's not always going to be your page but because our page is our container um, it's, it is our page size, but if you're doing groups inside groups inside groups, it's actually the container size. So you can see that from here, not just the page size. Okay, so when our container size is less than 570, we want that to collapse. So we can see that when we get to that, that below 570, it collapses to the width. So that's gonna look great on mobile. Now when the design element comes in, because we've already pre-designed this group, we want to add a condition. So we're going to change it within our styling tab. And we want to say when current page width is less than or equal to 570, we want our border roundness to be zero. Okay, so now we have our group, it's saved and it collapses beautifully onto mobile, looks great on mobile, and then looks great on desktop. Okay, so the next thing we might wanna do is have a group element that isn't, we don't want it to collapse. So if we go and add this next group, quite possible that it could look good with the roundness but it's predefined in our style so if we didn't want it to collapse under that scenario we need to remove it and remove our condition so we have our default group which collapses our width to be full width and it gets rid of our circle, and then our next element there still has our, uh, our rounded edges and it doesn't collapse. Okay, so the next important design feature when building your software or your dashboard or a SaaS product, somewhere where a user logs in, uh, the best way to create a navigation menu is to have a left uh, sidebar floating group that collapses into a slide menu 
uh, when on mobile. So to do that, we just uh, add our floating group. I've just named it left menu. And we have a condition here saying when current page width is less than 960, we want to hide that side menu. Now, I will add a link to a tutorial that I did on these left-hand menus that go into more uh, in depth on how to build this. Uh, but you can do it quite easily with a floating group. The main thing you want to add is a collapsible element underneath your group that collapses as well when the left-hand menu isn't visible. And the reason we do that is because in our responsive engine, we actually want whatever page we're showing to collapse and go full width. Okay, so as we collapse our page and it's hidden, then our main page elements uh, collapse and spread out across the width of the page. And then our slide menu is visible, and that's just a plugin uh, which is built by Bubble. Um, if you're uh, really getting into the design and you've got a lot of users, you may want to go and redesign your own uh, menu uh, on mobile uh, from scratch, but uh, for definitely for testing and early stages, it's a great and simple plugin uh, that does look pretty good on mobile. Okay, so we have our floating group that is hidden. Um, we have our collapse element that makes it go um, wide, and then we just show our slide menu element when our left uh, when our left menu is invisible we want to make this visible. Okay, and that's how you get a really nice design left-hand menu that as your page collapses into your mobile versions, you switch over to the uh, slide menu, which is created by Bubble. Um, so yeah, make sure you check out the tutorial on how to build uh, this more in depth. And again, like I said, this is using a repeating group and it's pulling in our data source from our option sets. So we have our pages here. We have um, our, our parent and our icon. They're the only two attributes that are needed. And then we're just showing and hiding our pages dependent on uh, these click elements here. Okay, so that's a really easy way to make your uh, backend dashboards look professional, industry standard, and easy navigation uh, for your users. Okay, for the last tip number five, we're going to show you how you can create reusable elements. Um, reusable elements are a great way uh, to reduce uh, how many sort of workflows that you're building with. If you're building, say, a dashboard and you've got a lot going on, um, your workflows can blow up really quickly. So one um, way to do that is, and the main way people use that is using reusable elements, but it's also great for um, from a design perspective as well. So it's very easy. So once you've designed um, um, some sort of aspect of your uh, software, so here we have a group, uh, we have a header, a subheading, um, we have some uh, features and a button. So if we're gonna use this in multiple places, um, throughout our app rather than rebuild it or copy and paste multiple times uh, because if we just copy and paste this uh, throughout our app if we decide to make any changes to this um, it's technically going to be its own uh, group of elements so you'd have to therefore go through the app and update each one so just by having one aspect we can convert this into a reusable element so we just right click and go convert to reusable element and, and we might just name this product feature group. Okay, so once you uh, convert that into a reusable element, it takes you into the actual uh, reusable element to edit. But if we go back to where we were, this is still going to be our original um, non reusable element version. So we just need to delete that, come down, you'll see it under your list. We drag that in and now on our page, we're using this reusable element. So we can go and then uh, add this reusable element anywhere throughout our software. Um, all you have to do is click on it and click on edit element. And then this will uh, update this element anywhere throughout your app. So if you make any changes, um, it's, 
it's updated everywhere throughout your app. So we just jump back to our tutorial and that's updated. And there we go. That's a great way to use reasonable elements to speed up the design of your next bubble IO build. So, okay guys, that's it for today. I hope you got something out of this tutorial. Uh, if you've got any questions, make sure you leave a comment below, hit subscribe, hit like, share with your friends and um, yeah, let us know what you're working on and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.